Hide your Intel processor, hide your AMD processor. Spectre's coming for you. Facebook wants to track you. Pretty, pretty please. Will you please just let us track you? And a lot of lawsuits as well as bitterness back and forth between giant tech companies. Let's get into the hot news, my friends. I am your host, Brett. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet so that you can get back to your day with just a quick little dose of the tech news that's going around. So let's start off with the one that might be most pertinent to you, which is that there is a new Spectre vulnerability that has been found in both both AMD and Intel processors, and it beats all previous mitigation. So that means that this is a new variant that actually has to be patched out of the chips that are already there. In fact, it's three new variants that work against the micro op cache and all modern AMD processors since 2017 and Intel processors from 2011 have it. You can see the list of the three new potential attacks on the screen. We'll leave links in the video description in case you want to deep dive on this. But as mentioned, none of the previous mitigations or fixes for the Spectre vulnerabilities, which have already claimed some performance loss on Intel chips are effective. And the three different ways that you can look at patching this appear to have heavy performance consequences. The first one would be to flush the instruction translation look aside buffer, but that would come with performance consequences. The second way would be partition micro op caches based on privileges, which would remove much of the performance advantages that are from the micro op cache. And then the third way would be to implement a performance performance counter-based monitoring that detects anomalies, which would lead to significant performance degradation. So we're not quite clear how much performance we're talking about here, but it does appear to be significant. In terms of previous Spectre and Meltdown patches that happened, it could be upwards of 30%, depending on the application. It's not yet known whether or not that's gonna happen right here. Both Intel and AMD actually haven't released a microcode update for this. However, the good news, but we still don't actually know, is how important this is or how wide ranging this may be a low risk issue. It might be that somebody has to have access to your physical system, in which case you have bigger fish to fry than just these Spectre vulnerabilities. However, again, as mentioned, it is not yet clear based on the reports that's come out from the researchers how prevalent this is going to be. Just know that this is happening and that you might have to be concerned with performance losses if you at all value the security of your system. But you don't have to deal with loss of back enjoyment because today's video sponsor Chirp helps to bring you some back relief. This is one of the very few things that I brought from my house on our three week road trip because I use it every single day. The Chirp Wheel Plus, you just get on it, you roll it and it has a unique four way stretch that with the spinal groove and it just pops your back in all the right areas, which I know is not as well as the fact that the Chirp Wheel Plus is FDA registered. And you could also buy it with your health savings account in case you want to. It comes in three different sizes to get to different portions of your back and how you like to treat those and the chirp wheel plus supports up to 500 pounds this has been one of our most popular sponsor spots so in case you want to check out the chirp wheel plus you can do so at the link in the video description big thanks to them for sponsoring today's episode of hot news the specter performance loss isn't the only thing intel is going to lose it turns out that they're looking to sell their sports tech business which includes true view as well as the cameras and everything that they have installed in over 20 team stadiums in the nfl as well as an eight different NBA home stadiums and tech and soccer stadiums globally. It has a whole bunch of cameras that give you alternate angles on plays that are happening on the field. It's really cool technology when you see it, but it looks like Intel's looking to sell it, at least according to reports that are out there. Intel, however, declining to comment on rumors and speculation. And I'm not speculating that these are some good looking GPUs, colorful, bringing back their Colorfire brand for Nvidia cards. Absolutely beautiful pink cards from Colorful, yes please. And Nvidia also showing off a custom RTX 3080 Overwatch cards not yet known if this is going to go on sale they might give it away like they did with the previous cyberpunk 2077 rtx 2080 ti but finally a custom rtx 3080 being promoted by nvidia directly now this is not being promoted by nvidia directly because they haven't even announced this thing yet but the rtx 3080 ti supreme x from msi has now been pictured you can see it right there it looks like all the other Supreme X's just with the 3080 Ti at the bottom. You're welcome. And now it's time for the GameStop Bitcoin update. GameStop, it's just been flat. Last week didn't really do much at all. It started off low at the beginning of the week, but then just kind of flattened out. So we'll see where it goes this week, my friends. But Bitcoin kind of down as well. It didn't really do much. Ethereum to note, however, hit some big numbers, all time highs happening. And the good news here is that Ethereum kind of decoupled itself from Bitcoin's valuation over the weekend and made its own 
own gains, okay? Ethereum doesn't need you, Bitcoin. And Facebook doesn't need Apple, but they need you to pretty, pretty please enable ads so that we can keep these things free of charge because we all know that if you won't let us track you, then we're gonna have to charge you for Facebook. And you don't want that, do you? Both Facebook and Instagram now putting out notices when you log into the applications, if you're on iOS 14.5, that they ask to track you for some data to improve your ads, to show you ads that are more personalized. Help keep Instagram and Facebook free of charge and support businesses that rely on ads to reach their customers. I just have to ask, if Facebook or Instagram started charging a monthly fee, not to go ad free, but just to exist, would you use it? I don't think you would. But it's also been very clear from other companies' business models like YouTube that getting people to pay for the ad-free version is something that they would do. So maybe Facebook might roll out a paid version for ad-free if that potentially happens later on down the line. We'll have to wait and see. But something that's not, I guess, as scummy as what Facebook's been doing with ads, but actually kind of cool, but could also be kind of malignant as well. They have shown off some of their new AI visualization that's happening. Their Dino AI is able to use visualized videos and transform those pictures with its own AI into computer-based models. And I know that sounds boring. Just watch this dang video of this pupper running across the field. You can see the different AIs being able to track this dog, the one on the right being Dino, which is absolutely crazy. And then they also have several others where you see the stock footage then morph into the AI capture model, which is just absolutely absurdly good, at least according to what Facebook's putting out themselves. Vision-based AI actually appears to be moving forward, and maybe Elon Musk was right to bet on it for Tesla. Only time will tell. But turns out that NASA was right to bet on SpaceX for sending up astronauts because Crew-1 has finally made splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico. This was the first nighttime landing ever since Apollo 8, and it also broke a spacecraft longevity record. It was the longest mission duration for a crewed American spacecraft coming in at 168 days, which beats the record previously set of 84 days. SpaceX back. However, NASA, even though they were great with the Crew Dragon stuff, they have suspended the SpaceX contract for the moon lander because of the other companies such as Blue Origin protesting that it was unfair that SpaceX got it. And so right now it's under a federal watchdog agency to adjudicate the two protests over the war to make sure that all's fair and go into the moon. And in another Elon Musk related company news, it turns out that the president of Neuralink has left the company several months ago, according to the tweet that he posted. Neuralink has not yet named another president for the company, and this is kind of a weird time, especially after they just debuted the implant that they had working in the monkey, and it's unclear what Neuralink's progress is going forward here. But this is going to be a spicy week when it comes to litigation and companies slinging mud back and forth. As of today, Epic and Apple's lawsuit is directly underway in the courts. But even though Epic versus Apple is starting today, there's another lawsuit that got filed, which is the creator of Humble Bundle is suing Valve because they believe that Valve has created a monopoly with Steam and that it abuses its market power to ensure game publishers have no choice but to sell most of their games through the Steam store. We'll see how this lawsuit develops. This is just the beginning of it. But as the Epic versus Apple lawsuit gets underway, Epic came out and said that, hey, Apple is making 78% margin on the App Store. It's absolutely absurd. They're taking advantage of all of these app developers, to which Apple responded, number one, we don't have separate profit and loss statements for the app store. So how the heck are you even getting gross margin numbers? And number two, Epic's experts calculations of the operating margins for the app store are simply wrong. And we look forward to refuting them in courts. This is gonna be a spicy week back and forth, but there's also some other documentation that's been coming out from this lawsuit, even with regards to Microsoft. And it turns out that according to these documents that Microsoft has been looking to not only cut its PC store revenue, which we talked about in last week's episode of Hot News, how they're gonna be reflecting Epic Games model where they only take 12% as opposed to 30%, but they were also looking to do that on console to shake up the industry in that side. Now, it's not quite clear if Microsoft's gonna be moving forward on it, but they're at least considering it, which could make it so that Sony has to pivot as well as other companies in the console market. And then the last public tip we're gonna address is Roku versus YouTube TV. We talked about this in a previous episode of Hot News last week that Roku didn't like that Google was being shovey with prioritizing YouTube in their search. So they said, hey, stop it. 
or we're not gonna have YouTube TV around anymore. And YouTube was just like, oh, stop it with your underhanded shady tactics. And Roku was like, fine, if you're gonna dismiss us, we're taking it off our app store. And YouTube TV is now taken down from Roku's app store. And then Google came out with a blog post and said, our initial conversation started with Roku simply to renew the current terms of the ongoing deal with YouTube TV, which has been in place for several years. Our offer to Roku was simple and still stands. Renew the YouTube TV deal under the existing reasonable terms. If you already had YouTube TV on Roku, you're totally fine. Then Google also came out and said, hey, if you're a Roku user who has YouTube TV, tweet at Roku and let them know this is bad, which has got to be like six people. So I'm sure Roku's really working on this at this point. And VW is apparently working on its own chip design for their upcoming full self-driving technology, at least according to the company, saying that they are looking to develop their own chips very much like Apple and Tesla are doing. They don't want to be dependent on anybody else. And we might not have to wait much longer for our parents to provide us with our genes because Harvard announcing that they are creating a gene editing tool that could rival CRISPR and does some things that CRISPR just can't do. This is something that obviously excites me as a father of a child who has a rare genetic disorder where just finding a way to fix a single gene could just solve all of our problems because he has hundreds of seizures a day and it's caused by a singular gene and CRISPR can't tackle it because the gene's too big. So as this technology advances, it makes me super excited. This one being called by Harvard, the Retron Library Recombineering or the RLR technique with them saying that it's enabled them to do stuff that's impossible to do with CRISPR, we'll leave a link in the video description in case you want full details on that. But I'm excited for gene editing for like health reasons, medical reasons, like good protecting children and like my family reasons, not the whole like we, we can make children with horse legs and have them run across the field at like 60 knots. What do you think of gene editing? Complicated political discussion down below in the comments. What's not a complicated political discussion is that I built the ultimate portable gaming setup, which you could go check out that video over on UFD Tech. It's how I've been working while I've been traveling. I'm sure you guys might be interested in it and I'll see you in tomorrow's episode of Hot News, my friends. Cheers.